Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank God for another opportunity for us to come again into his presence. And as we come, the writer says, let's forget about ourselves as we concentrate upon him and worship him who is the king of kings. Amen. And the Lord of lords. So we honor God today. Amen. We honor God for his mercies. Amen. We honor him for his loving kindness and for his tender mercies towards us. Amen. I'm going to invite everyone to stand. Amen. As we begin our worship for today. Put your hands together and just worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Come on. Put your hands together and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Let's welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Be
serve an awesome new year. Hallelujah. Amen to his will this morning. Amen to his way this morning. Your writer says, not my will this morning. But that will be done this morning. Amen. As we remain in the attitude of worship, Hallelujah. we're going to invite Brother Francis to please come and open our service in prayer today. For thine is the kingdom. Hallelujah. I say, for thine is the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name. For thine is the kingdom. Hallelujah. God in this place. We praise you. We adore you this morning. Oh God, we come into this place with one purpose this morning. That is to praise thy holy name. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. I pray, Holy Spirit, that as you pass through this place, oh God, let your peace rest upon us this morning. Let your peace, oh God, which passes the human understanding, rest in this place this morning. Glory to your name. Father, oh God, we invite you to rest. Amen. Rest your Holy Spirit in us this morning. I pray this morning Amen. for every individual in this place. I pray, mighty God, that healing will flow through this place this morning. Touch your people. Touch those that are feeling sick this morning. Great God of heaven, I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, that you take over this service. Remember the pastor that will deliver your word this morning. I pray, God Almighty, that you send us special words to our heart. Oh, God, I pray that you bless him in a mighty way this morning. Oh, God, I pray that everything that shall be rendered unto you this morning, that you will get the glory and the honor because everything belongs unto you. Bless your people this morning, Jesus. Take over this service. And mighty God, whatever we fail to ask thee, I pray that you'll grant it unto us. In Jesus' name I pray. rejoicing in a full and free salvation. I have no doubt this morning that the people enter into his gate with thanksgiving. Come on, church of God. I said I have no doubt this morning that his people enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And so this morning we are thankful unto him and bless his name. What an awesome present. Oh, to be in the atmosphere of the most high God. Hallelujah. I said what an awesome present. To be in the atmosphere of the most high God. Oh, glory to Jesus.
for thine is the kingdom. For thine is the glory. Amen. I say amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We're excited this morning. And the reason why we are so excited, we can feel the already feel the Spirit of God manifesting Himself in this place. And I want to take that time to welcome those who are watching my life this morning. We believe that He's doing a great work even right now in your life, in your situation. He is an awesome God. For thine is the kingdom. Amen to that. I say amen to that this morning. It is with great pleasure as we gather here this morning. Who could ever tell after yesterday of all day working for the, in the vineyard of the Lord that we would come inside this place and God could recharge our battery in such a way that we are exploding in the presence of a mighty God. But I pray this morning and say, Lord, renew the strength of your people this morning because I was so blessed yesterday when you see all of us working together in one accord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Working together for the same cause. And I pray this morning, I say, Lord, just renew our strength this morning. It's another day of worship and praise and thanksgiving. And I can truly say this morning, I believe he's working because I feel him in my heart. And it's a beautiful thing when you're standing, you can feel the brethren. Hello. When you can feel each other. Hallelujah. For the joy of the Lord this morning is our strength. Hallelujah. He is here. He is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just reach out to him right now. Give God a clap. Hallelujah. Give him a big shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise Hallelujah. the name of Jesus. You may be seated for a moment. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. I honor God today. I honor him for his goodness and for his mercies. I honor him for what he's doing in the life of the church. I thank God that in him this morning we move and we have our beings. Without him this morning, amen, we would have been nothing. But with him by our side, we are everything. With him in our lives, we are everything. And I thank him for that. Praise God. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Praise 
the name of Jesus. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. You may be seated in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're still on the fruit of the Spirit. The last and final one, which is temperance. And we look at what it is and what the Bible says about us being under temperance or be in control. And we see what the Bible says last week that we as people of God, we got to learn to control ourselves, our temper. Hallelujah. But today we're going to look at some others. So what we want to look at today, the first one we want to look at today, what commonly shows a lack of self-control. So how do you know that somebody is lacking self-control? And uh, we're going to look at it from a biblical point of view. Not from what we think that it should be, but from what the Bible says. Amen. So Proverbs 23, verse 19 to 21 says, Hear thou, my son, and be wise. And guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among righteous hearers of flesh. For the drunkard and the gotten shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. What woe, what sorrow, what contention, what bubbling, who hath wounds, who have cast, who has redness of eyes. They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou up on the wine when it is red. When it giveth its color in the cup. When it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent. And stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall be all strange woman. And thine heart shall utter Perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth laid up to the top of a moss. And they have stricken me. Thou shalt say, I, I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. So when you read this scripture here, you can see some things that the Bible says that we as people, as God, if we don't, if we see these things happening in our lives, it means that we have no temperance. So if you're a Christian and you're getting drunk, you're having a problem. If you're a Christian and you're overheating, it's called gluttony. You have no self-control. Remember, the Bible did not say you cannot have a drink. You see, many will tell you you don't drink. But the Bible did not say it. The Bible actually gives instruction how to drink. And if you want to drink, and even the deacons are, they, they could drink a little for your stomach. But in Proverbs, he said, don't be drunkard. Don't be deceived by it. So I'm not one of those people that are going to tell you you can't have a drink. But how you drink is important. And where you drink is important. You can't be like everybody else. You cannot be in the rum bar drinking. You can't be in the dance hall drinking. You can't be doing all these things no more. You can't be at home drinking and getting drunk. But you can still have a little to drink based on the word of God. But you must have self-control. If you recognize if you have one drink, you're going to keep drinking, don't drink. 
stay off it. Because it means you cannot control yourself. It's just like if you know that you can only eat one, if you know you just start eating ice cream, you're going to finish the bucket. Come on. Don't bother to buy the ice cream. Because whatever you're going to do, you're going to be able to control it. Yes. Hallelujah. You must have self-control. And that's what the Bible is saying here. That you must have temperance. Yes, you must be able to control yourself in whatever you are doing. You must be able to control yourself. It is important as people of God that we have control. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Glory, yes. Glory to God. Glory. We must of control. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3 and 5 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Come on. We have Christians who cannot control themselves. They are fornicating. They are doing all kind of things and they know it is wrong. They, have, they can't control their sexual appetites. The Bible says you must have it. It's called temperance. You cannot lose control. You must have that. That every one of you should know how to possess his, vest, his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles wish. No, not God. So what the Bible is saying, we cannot be the way the world is. Hallelujah. You cannot be a Christian and live the way the, the, the world lives. You can't just go out there and just pick up a, a, a one night stand as the world is doing. We cannot now, in, in the body of Christ, now that the young people, you got to be careful because now they want a test run. As if the, the young women have their cars. You got to preserve yourself in sanctification for your husband. So you got to be able to have that control, that temperance, that control yourselves, amen, in every situation. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. There's so many things that happen in Christendom today that it's against the word of God. And it's because we as people of God, we don't even teach it enough to our young people. Why? Because we think it's a sin. No, it's a sin if we don't teach them. They need to know in school they're teaching them the wrong thing. And if you don't teach them, somebody is going to teach them. The television is going to teach them. You need to teach them the right thing, the right etiquette, the right way, the Bible way, how to preserve yourselves and how to control yourselves as people of God, as young people. Amen. If you want to be profitable, if you don't want to be in poverty. The Bible teaches us that if we follow a certain type of situation, we will live in poverty. Many of us Christians say that we are in a poverty-stricken state. Why? Because we have no self-control. You know that you can't, you, 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 this is how much you work. But yet, you're spending what you don't have. Because there's a credit card that you have. You've got to be able to self-control. You need temperance in your finances. You need temperance in everything that you do in people of God. Amen. So you don't end up in poverty. You don't end up in stress. You're going to end up being sickly because stress causes sickness. You've got to have temperance. You've got to have self-control. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. It will give you some more information. Amen. So lust, greed, gluttony, alcoholism, conceit, sexual sins, gossiping, violent, quarreling, falls and reckless speech are just a few of the many things that Satan is using to tempt the church of God today that we must have temperance against. Amen. It's a long list and it's only a part of the list. Lust. How many of us as people of God will lust after everything that we see? We, everything we lust after it. And it's not a good lust. Hallelujah. It's not the type that Paul calls zealous. Where you're zealous after a good thing. It's a, a lust that is nasty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greed. Oh, we need to have control. Gluttony. Alcoholism. Conceit. Some of us Christians were so conceited. 
sexual sins. Remember, the Bible says you don't have to do the heart no more. Right. You just need to look and conceive it. Right. So just looking at somebody else's wife and conceive it in your heart what you would like to and might want to do. The Bible says you're sinning against God. So you got to be able to have control even of the, of the thought process. Hallelujah. Because the devil, he want to throw these ideas at you. And you got to be able to have self-control to know that I must rebuke it. Because this shall not be named and this imagination that coming in is not of God. You got to be able to take control of that vain imagination and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Alcoholism. Many Christians today, we are drinking and we are still getting drunk. Now it's the summertime and Christians are sitting in their backyard and getting drunk. Oh, hallelujah. Because we're doing it behind closed door. No, it's not right if you're going in and taking out on your, your wife and your children. Because the Bible talks about it, what is ha what happened. When you get too much wine, you get out of control. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So even though you're in, the, in your home, it doesn't give you the liber liberty to do whatever you want to get drunk and become a problem in your homes. You can imagine police being called to a Christian home for, because there's alcohol in there and the kids have been abused. And you can imagine. You understand why we're not respected or the, world, the church of God is not respected anymore because of what's happening. We have no self-control. We, when we're in the house of God, we're a saint. But when we're at home, we ain't. Amen. Hallelujah. We're only saint when we get into the house of God. But so out of the God, we ain't. We are nothing. We only exercise that when we're in the house of God. But we got to exercise it wherever we go. We have to have self-control. We got to have temperance. The world should be able to see us and know that that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. Just by the way you operate and carry yourself. Just by the way your speech is. They should know. Because when Jesus went to the body, he said, your speech alone yes, sir. will tell who you are. There's some Christian, they're so vulgar. Oh, hallelujah. I've been in many, in many churches, walk outside and hear the women talking. And I'm, I'm telling you, I can't believe they're still, they're coming from out of the house of God. Because as soon as they walk out, they gossip in and everything started. And the names they call each other as becoming saints. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Everything in the world is in the church. Oh, hallelujah. You can imagine in the world that men are calling themselves dogs and in the church they're still doing this. They're doing the same thing. What dog? Come on, you're no dog. You're saints of the most high God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody call you no dog and you, you, you give them an high five. You know what the mentality of a dog and you're making high five people of God are succumbing to the things of the world and you think you're cool no you're not cool you're a fool that's what it is hallelujah when there were young people think that these are cool we're not cool we're a fool because we are adopting things that's not right hallelujah you're, you're conforming to the world instead of being transforming through the renewal of your mind in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Gossiping, violent, quarreling. You know, you have some real Christian, they're Jezebelish, they have that Jezebel spirit that they can't, they, they got to have to go to some fast and prior to get rid of that. And you can't even talk to them. They, they flare up. Yes. You can't even have a good conversation with them. They flare up. You cannot, they have no reasoning power. As soon as they want to reason with them, they get off the deep end. They have no self-control. The Bible says we cannot be able to have that self-control. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You got to be able to write in that fire. And you got to have control in that fire. Sometimes it's eating you hard. Oh, Hallelujah. But you got to suppress it through the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Sometimes you want to respond, but you can't respond because if you open your mouth, you know what's going to come out. And you just got to keep your mouth shut. And there's a saying, you grin and you bear it. You smile. And that's what the Bible says, you can smile at the star. But they don't expect you to smile, you're smiling. And it drives the devil crazy. Do you know that? When you have control, it drives the devil crazy. Because when the devil attacks you, he expects you to do something out of the ordinary. But when he's attacking you and you realize that, listen, this man has control or this woman has control. Guess what? You got to go back to drawing board and come again. And when you come again, you're going to realize that, you know what? There, I can't break him. You're going to make the devil always think before they come to you. As we talked about last week, one of those things, we got to have the wall around us. Because if we have no wall around us, we have no self-control. Anything can come in. Anything will come in and take a president. Anything will come in and cause problems. Christians, we're false. We don't speak the truth. We pretend. We, look, we, we, we say we're one thing, but we're not. We're false. It's just the, 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 the ear makeup and all that that take away from really who you are. You, you try to, 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 to be somebody that you're not. You, you got to be real. You cannot be false. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reckless speech. We don't think about the word that comes out of our mouth. We speak, we destroy somebody because we have no self-control. We destroy our own sisters and brothers in the house of God. Why? Because you make reckless speech. You don't think about what comes out of your mouth when the Bible says what comes out of your mouth must be seasoned. You, eat, you ever eat a piece of meat that have no season in it? It doesn't taste too good. But when you season it up, it sounds nice. It tastes nice. Even if you don't want to eat it. Sometimes you take a little bit. I, I don't like this, but when you touch it, I, oh wow, this is good. Why? Because there's some spice had to it. So just as the word that comes out of your mouth, you got to be seasoned. It should not be reckless. you got to put some thought into what you're saying to each other. Yes. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to offend or commit or, or, or offend or cause people, amen, to, 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 to feel bad about themselves. Amen. We need to we do it with grace and season so that we don't get reckless and people want to have a communication with us. Many people only want to talk to certain people because of their attitude and what will come out of their mouth. As people of God, we gotta, even if we're like that in the world, we cannot be like that now. There must be a change. As we sang this song last week, it must be a change. When Jesus touch you, must be a change. Amen. When Jesus touch you. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is using that against kingdom citizens and winning. And we are allowing it. We are allowing Satan to win. The Bible says that we got to take control of it. Is self-control for the benefit of ourselves only? No. Because many of us think it's about me, myself, and I. It's not what we think. My life is mine. I don't really care what other people think. But we, we, we need to care what other people think. About you and about your lifestyle. You got you to gotta care about it. Listen what Romans chapter 12 verse 18 to 21 says. If it be possible, as much as lieth within who? If it is possible, as much as lieth within, what should we do? With all men, if it is possible. But what the Bible is saying, it's not possible. It's not because he said if. If it is. So you got to try. 
It's your job to try and live peaceably with all man. But if we realize that it's not working, the Bible says two cannot walk unless they agree. So if you cannot agree and if you realize that it's not coming together, even though you're trying to live peaceably, your brother, you go your way in order, in, in order for you both to have a peaceful life instead of being always being miserably. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto what? Wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Many of us like to take matters into our own hands. You got to have control and you got to know when to give it back. Yes, some things that we have the power to deal with, some things we don't have. We just got to give it back to God because what? We don't have the self-control. We don't have the patience. We don't have the temperance. So we need God. Yes. Hallelujah. Some things are easy to deal with, but there's something that take much. Oh, glory to God. And we need the power of the Holy Ghost yes, to hold us a check, to keep us in the right place, in the right mind, in the right state of place of temperance. So we can get through it. Verse 20, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap up coals of fire on his head. Do you know what that, that, that verse, I, that verse is just a powerful verse of scripture. Because many times we, 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 we want to shun our enemy. But the Bible commands us that we should love them. We should. And he said there's a reason for it. He said the heap of coals of fire on your head. What does it mean to heap up coals of fire on somebody's head? It means it caused conviction to come up on them. You can understand as a Christian living next door to an ungodly person. And that ungodly person is constantly giving you a hard time. But every morning you get up, you go out and you see me say, good morning. Right. How are you doing? Right. How was your night? Oh, you have a good night's sleep. How was the family doing? Yeah. And he's looking at you and he's saying, I hate this man. Why is he trying to have a conversation? And he would not even answer you. Yes. But every time you see him, you keep doing it. Yes. And one day you realize this man turned around and said, good morning. Right. And how are you? Why? Because the evil conviction in his head and he thinks that you should be mad with him. But he realized that no, this man is different or this woman is different. And guess what? That person could become your best friend, your best neighbor. Yes. Not because they don't say hello. It doesn't mean that you don't need to say hello. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Even though they treat you bad, yes. they might kill your cat. Kill the dog. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. But you still need to show them some love. Yes. You got to have that temperance to be able to go beyond what the natural man thinks. What you think would have been a problem, you realize it, you're working and turning around to good. When they expect you to not to, you know, I, I have some neighbors, they, they, when they're parking, they park right to the, so that I have no, I can't park anything there, but it, right to the point. But when they have their guests over, they're in my space. Right. And if I'm ever in their space, they come and knock my door. Wow. But I don't bother them when they're in my space, I just find another place and park. Because I have, they got to think about it someday and realize that guess what? This man is not warm with me when they're in my parking. So why should I war with them if somebody is in theirs? You know, so we got to break down these things not by reacting. We got to have control to, to make wise decisions. Hallelujah. So that we can live blameless with the worst of neighbors. Hallelujah. You must have to deal with people and, and not every one of them is nice. So we got to have temperance to deal with the people in the workplace. You need it in the workplace. 
Many are losing their job because they have no temperance. In their workplace, they are blowing up. And they're getting, losing their job, their livelihood. And they go home and then they ask pastor to pray for them. They need to have temperance. When God is blessing you, the enemy is going to attack you. And if he's going to attack you, you got to expect you to know that I'm going to keep some control here. Yeah. I better make sure I'm vigilant yeah. in my situation, yeah. in the place around me. You got to have that temperance to acknowledge and to see what's going on around you and to be able to take control and have control in whatever situation it is. And then you can become overcomer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 13, 8 to 14. I won't read that. Amen. Romans 14, 20, 23. For meat destroy not the weak, the work of God. All things is indeed pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby it, thy brother stumble, or is offended, or it make your brother weak. The Bible is saying here, and this is very important because, because you eat pork and somebody that doesn't eat pork, it doesn't mean that you need to force it on them. It, if, if it's going to offend that brother, you better don't eat it in their sight. You're becoming a stumbling block in your brother way. Because instead of you getting your brother closer to you, you're pushing your brother further away because of the things you can do without what you're doing. And in order to draw somebody in and even to invite them into the house of God, you got to be able to get around them, move around them and know what they're about. And if you're doing something that they, they, they think is, is, they don't like and you can make a change, make the change so that you don't be a stumbling block in that person way to prevent that person. Something we can put aside in order for God to have his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Thou art faith, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which is allowed. And he that doubteth in demand of, of it if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatever is not of faith is sin. So not everybody have the faith that we have. We have the faith that we can eat anything. And we can drink anything. Some people don't have the faith. Don't talk to a Seventh-day Adventist. They won't eat pork. They don't have the faith to eat it. They think they eat it, they're going to sick. So it's important, people of God, that we have temperance, we wish is self-control, in order not to offend others because of our way of life. We've got to be able to have that self-control. And I say this because the word of God is for us. So the God, God is not, the Bible is not talking about people outside of the church. So it's not like we're trying to appease ungodly people. We're talking about our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. So self-restraint and obedience to God's law is realized in outpouring concern for others. So we have to have concern for each other. That's something self-control. We got to have self-control and we must think about each other. Hallelujah. We must. Self-control provides ability to resist what may cause pain to others. So I want to say this again because I think it's very important. Self-control provides the ability to resist what may cause pain to others. Thus, we exercise self-control for others as well as ourselves. So we have self-control. It affects our lives and it affects others' lives. But if we have self-control, then everybody will be able to live together, worship together, praise God together. Oh, glory to God. And we can have a beautiful house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we have temperance for each other. We have self-control and we are not trying to affect somebody else's life. We are trying to make everybody work together so that we can build up the house of God. And we can become stronger. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to look at one more and we're going to call it here today. What elements are involved in producing self-control? This is very important. We're looking at this from the Bible perspective. What elements are involved in producing self-control? Look at Proverbs 25 verse 16 says, I thou found honey, eat so much as it is sufficient for thee. Lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. You can imagine? The Bible says you find honey. But you, not because. Proverbs 25 verse 16. Not because it is sweet. You don't need to indulge in it. Until you vomit it up. Save some for tomorrow. That's what the Bible is saying here. Come on, let's read it together. Thou art found honey. Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. That word sufficient, it means when you're full. When you're satisfied, stop. You got to have that control to stop. Enough is enough. I have enough. Guess what? Let's what? Let's thou be filled therewith and you vomit it. So instead of you save some for another day, you eat it all and the stomach can only take so much and you vomit it up so you lose it. It tastes so good, sever it. Yes. Leave some for tomorrow. Yes. Don't try to kill it and finish it all. One day you're killing yourself because when the body has to reject it, it means it's way too much. Yes. You must have self control. You got to know when to stop. Yes. Proverbs chapter 12, 1 to 4 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the reunion of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1 to 3. For I say through the grace of given unto me, to every man that is among you, that not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God uh, dealt to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Church of God. Yes, Church of God. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. We must have temperance. Yes. We must have temperance. It is very important that we have temperance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We as people of God, we must have temperance. It is imperative that we have temperance. Hallelujah. Because if we don't do that, we're going to fall into trouble. We cannot lose out. We lose out in a lot. Because we lose out, we have no self-control. We got to have temperance. We must have temperance. We gotta renew our minds. We gotta just eat till we eat till we eat till we eat. We gotta have some kind. It's a sin. It's a glut, gluttony is a sin. We gotta have temperance, self control to each other. I was hoping to have this done today, but it's not gonna happen. Amen. So we'll continue on this tomorrow, God, next week, God's willing. Amen. Because I want us to look at it and see even how to see how the Holy Ghost will help us in this temperance. Because I want you to understand how important the Holy Ghost is in our lives. There is nothing that is left out of. Everything in a Christian life, the Holy Ghost is instrumental. 
It enabled us to carry out the task. When the Bible says he was going to send you a comforter, a teacher, he is the Holy Ghost. And we need to have temperance. We need to be able to put up with each other. Don't we? You know, there's even in our homes today, we don't have that temperance. We can't even, we don't even have the temperance to look after our children anymore. Our, everything is so short. Temper is short. Everything is just. Our lives are miserable because there is no temperance. We don't put up with each other no more. Sometimes when I look back at my parents' life, and when I study books like this and the scripture like this, I realize God, they have temperance. Now the world is taking away what the Bible says we should have. Because everything is now quick fix. But we must have temperance in this world. This is when we need it more. Because just the way the world is will allow you to lose what you should have. Because we will want to be conformed to the things of the world instead of being transformed into what God said we should be. So we need to have temperance. God's grace be with you. God cast his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Oh, when I said, come to God,
unto the Lord. What shall we then say to these things? What shall we then say to these things? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? We adjourn this session until 6 p.m. Please, God. God bless you. Amen. Have a great afternoon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.